Welcome to the show, guys. Joseph Roberts, a fantasy football counselor, alongside Tim, a.k.a. the ball guy. What's going on, Tim? Two weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah, you're back in action, ready to go, talking full NFL Week 13 preview. We're talking spreads. We're talking fantasy football news, fantasy football injuries for NFL Week 13. Uh, Starts and Sits episode is going to be on Friday, but we're talking games here. We're going to go through every game, analyze, talk, break it down, talk about everything. So before we get into this, Tim, this show is brought to you by pristineauction.com. Head on over there, guys. Use promo code SWAGLION. We have a draw tomorrow for a signed Diggs helmet. Also, just did a video on Instagram highlighting some of the other giveaways, including a Hopkins signed jersey and a Najee Harris signed helmet. So much. And I got Eckler, I got Eckler swag coming as well. PristineAuction.com, promo code SWAGLION. Sign up, you entered for all draws moving forward. Very simple, Tim. I'll put a link below. SWAGLION. And the good thing is Joe can't win the Najee because he would love to have it. I, I would love to, but what I've been doing is I've actually been documenting uh, me shipping them out. So Christine's watching. The fans are watching. <laughs> I actually got to do that. I can't keep it. I want to keep it. This It's one not I rigged. But no, it's not. So these are going out. I'd love to keep the Najee Harris. I'm, I'm drooling over it. Uh, there might be some drool on it when you guys win this. But aside from that, love the, love the stuff. PristineAuction.com. Use promo code SWAGLINE. Let's dive in here. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up as well. All right. So let's talk about this. The first matchup here. Uh, Thursday night game. Now, if again, if you are listening to this Thursday morning or Friday morning or Saturday morning, just fast forward the first three minutes. We'll get to the other matchups, but this is a Thursday. We released this Thursday morning. So we got the Cowboys at the Saints. Oh, sorry, at the Saints. Yeah, Saints are at home. Five point underdog. 47 and a half is the over under here. Dak seven four versus five and four Saints. Must win here for I think both teams at this point in the game. Yeah, I mean, the Saints without Kamara are useless. Now, I believe Kamara is questionable this week, but even yeah. still, let's just assume he's not going to play. And even if he does play, he's he's not the Kamara of two, three years ago. He's not looking that amazing this year. So let's just chalk this up to Dallas right now. Oddly enough, both these teams played on Thanksgiving on Thursday. Dallas losing in overtime. Tragic loss to the Vegas Raiders, 36-33. And Buffalo smashed the Saints 31-36. I mean, I'm going to go. I'm going to give this one to the Cowboys here for sure. Yeah, me too. All right. It's going to be entertaining as long as we get some entertainment here. And again, I like watching the Cowboys play. Um, again, Dak Prescott, they, they've been bad. That receiving core has been a little bit banged up. Hopefully everything's uh, back to normal. We get a good performance out of them. And Zeke Elliott, I think he was questionable. His knee was bothering him. Oh, let's go over some injuries as well after this one here. But he was questionable. And uh, he should be he should be good to go. So a couple injuries I want to talk about here as we go into this for fantasy football injuries, NFL Week 13. Uh, I think with Hopkins and Murray, both these guys were limited in practice. I think they should be good to go. Hopkins with the hamstring, obviously. Murray with the ankle. Antonio Brown's going to probably miss a couple weeks with the ankle on the Buccaneers. Cordell Patterson, non-injury, did not participate Wednesday, but he'll play. He's, he's a stud of Atlanta. Another one you want to be aware of here, and you know, I'm just talking about the fantasy relevant, was DeAndre Swift. I heard he, his shoulder's bothering him. He did miss uh, practice Wednesday. I think he's going to be out for a couple weeks from what I hear. If you have Swift, be prepared to probably not have him for a couple weeks. And like I said, Zeke Elliott with the knee fully participated on Wednesday. He's not on the injury report for this week. Also, Tim, how do you feel, man? Dalvin Cook, I called it, hurt again. Um, You know, he's hurt. CMC's out. It's been crazy for first-round running backs, including Derrick Henry, the rock, the horse, the workhorse running back, rock goes down and Saquon obviously my guy underperforming this year first round running backs but what a disaster right yeah yeah I talked about it a little bit last week like to me it seemed like the running backs just weren't getting it done this year in general so I went back and looked at some information and I was I was a little bit wrong I said like we've only got three guys in 20 point range right now and I'm not talking about he played two or three games and he got 20 points a game I'm talking about a guy who plays pretty much every game I can excuse losing one or two games to the injury not a big deal Anyways, this year, it just seems like there's no solid guy giving you 20 plus. You know, we've had a couple of those high 30s, 40s, um, even. uh, Hey, Lenny did it last week. Uncle Lenny for 47 points. Yeah. And it's so funny because last week I talked about him during the show. I said, you know what? Nobody's really talking about him. And he's been quiet and getting it done. But all of a sudden, I believe he's now ranked sixth or fifth amongst running backs because of last week. 
Yeah, Uncle Lenny, man. I think he had like three or four touchdowns last week. Four. Getting getting it done. Um, yeah, again, it's just been like a lot of uncertainty. That's why I go robust RB. So with me particularly, I had Saquon go down, you know, when he went down, you know, for, what is that, three or four weeks in. I was fortunate enough to have enough depth to get Michael Carter in. I think I had Josh Jacobs who carried me through. Michael Carter had some good weeks. Then he went down. Saquon's back. He's underperforming. Hopefully we have a – and I made the playoffs in this one uh, big money league. Um, I'm actually, there's four teams that make the playoffs. So I did make it. I'm playing the, the number one team. I'm actually in third place. He had a couple more wins than me. So I'm playing him this week and uh, hopefully Saquon finally, when I need him now can actually do something. Give me that return on that first round pick. I was fortunate enough to get Najee Harris in second round across the board. Um, again, running backs is not performing where they should. Now we were just talking about Dallas as well. So the whole Zeke situation, like Zeke's been a little banged up this year. Right. And even last year I was concerned about Zeke and I was saying Pollard might steal more. Pollard might steal. That was last year. Mind you, last year Pollard really didn't affect him. However, this year I was looking at the numbers. Pollard is just as good. Yeah, he Pollard's really good. is. He's doing just as good. He's not getting the touchdowns. Um, but as far as the yards per carry, I think he's he's right there, neck and neck with Zeke. So yeah. he's he's not a bad option, man, and he might be the running back of the future. I'm not saying that Zeke is over the hill already and he's done. He might just need a change of scenery. He might need to go somewhere Maybe. else and kind of get a fresh start. And it's that young hunger when you get the opportunity. If you're a backup, you're like, man, I got I got to shine on every run. You know what I mean? So I understand that. Um, all right, let's get to the Sunday games here. One o'clock, we got. I don't even care about this team. Oh, 10 and one Jared Goff at home with the Detroit lions. Again, Swift being out, they'll be in trouble. Not really finding this team fantasy relevant with Hawkinson. Maybe he has his games here and there. And then you've got Madison who's starting with the Vikings here. 46 and a half is the over under Madison is definitely a start here against Detroit who are again at home, Detroit being a seven point underdog in this matchup. I think Minnesota tramples these guys, runs all over. I know they're five and six, but with Thielen Jefferson going, Madison should be fine enough at the running back position. I think it's going to be Miami, or sorry, Minnesota all over them here. Absolutely. Easily Minnesota. It's a no brainer. Let's move on here. The Giants versus Miami, four and seven. Uh, Giants versus five and seven. Uh, Miami Gi- uh, Giants beating, I think it was the Eagles last week. Saquon, again, just crap in the bed. I think he had like nine points, which was actually better than a lot of other starting running backs, but nine points was pathetic. And then you've got Jalen Waddle kind of having those big games as well, fantasy relevant for the Dolphins. Again, this is not a game I'll be watching. Tua, uh, you know, he's supposed to be a franchise guy. He's not really sold me. Daniel Jones, franchise guy, haven't sold me. These guys are fillers, if you ask me, at the quarterback position. But this one's a coin toss, Tim. 42 points to the over-under. Uh, what's your prediction here? Yeah, it's funny because the first thing I said uh, is like, is it the time for the Giants to shine? You know, and I put question marks. Saquon, time to heat up. I, I was concerned about Saquon to begin with this year, you know, after the injury and seeing yeah. what's happened to him this year. He's he's not going to be the same guy for a little while. I have to say Miami. I have to say Miami, but I want to say the Giants. But no, yeah. to me, it's Miami. And you hit on it, Waddle. I think Waddle's looking amazing. And it's funny because I talked about him last week as well. I think he's going to be a real stud. And yeah, he's on a crap team, but he's doing amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to be rooting for the for the Giants simply because I have Saquon. So I'm hoping it's a good game for Saquon. All right, they're a two and a half point dog, by the way, the Giants are. So you almost have to take the spread. But obviously, according to Vegas, this game is really a coin toss where they would have went three points or something like that, right? Um, all right, next one here. Again, Kyler, we said questionable, but I think you should play him and all Hopkins. They're a seven and a half point favorite on the road. 46 and a half is the over under. I think it's going to be a relatively high, could be a relatively high scoring game if Arizona gets in the groove and Kyler is going against the Bears, who've been a disaster. Justin Fields. Four and seven versus nine and two. Bears at home, seven and a half point underdog. You got to go Arizona here. Um, if Kyler starts 100% Arizona, I'm not looking forward to this match. Montgomery not performing for fantasy at all. Like he's been mediocre at best this year. I think mean, he came off that injury. Um, again, while I watch this game, probably not. No, me neither. But this is all Arizona. Yeah, has to be. I don't see it any other way. Yeah. Not especially, I mean, especially if Kyler's in, but even if he's out, I still give it to Arizona. <laughs> And you know, you're talking fantasy football bust. And this is one of the reasons I don't go wide receiver first round. Because, again, you get that value with Michael Pittman's of the world. Cooper Cup was a fourth-round pick. Thielen I got in the fifth round. You get so much value. Waddle's gone off. Jamar Chase. You get so much value at wide receiver. That's why I say stack the wide receivers, go robust RB early, and it's been working out. So, for example, Hopkins, first-round pick, been injured this year. 
And it's like his, the distribution, there's so many wide receivers. There's so many options for Kyler, you know, Hopkins has just not performed where he needs to perform. Yeah. So let's, let's move on here. Let's go to Atlanta at home coming off a win five and six, Matt Ryan, 50 and a half is the over under here at home. 10 and a half point underdog are Atlanta versus Tampa Bay. If Atlanta is showing up, they, it depends. Sometimes Atlanta shows up. Sometimes they crap the bed. Cordell Patterson's been playing really well. Pitts has got to get going. Like we talked about, overhyped. If, if you know, they just got to get going. If they're in their groove, they can cover this spread. If not, you know, it's going to be Tampa Bay walking all over them here again. Yeah, Atlanta doesn't have a groove, man. They have a rut. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, they just they can't do anything. I, I hate them lately. I just I hate them for the last few years. Like. Yeah, very nuts. frustrating to watch. Very frustrating to watch. Um, just the fact that they're not aggressive. So I was watching, like, I watch a bunch of their games because I have Pitts and I have Matt Ryan as the second quarterback in the league. But um, actually, that's one of the teams I made the playoffs in as well. Matt Ryan, believe it or not, and Carson Wentz carried me. I ended up going robust RB. I had, like, you know, Saquon, Najee, James Robinson, I have Cornell Patterson. I have some good RB depth in this league. Uh, really good wide receivers, too. But I kind of lacked on the wide receiver on the quarterback. So I watched these games, the point I'm trying to make. And I'm watching the game, Tim, and it's like, I don't know what it's like. They're up by, let's say, seven, they're up by a touchdown. Okay. There's eight minutes left in the game. And they're like running the ball, like they're trying to kill the clock, like they've won the game. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like they should, they're not aggressive saying, okay, we got to get another touchdown on the board. No, they think that seven points is going to win them the game with eight minutes left. No dummies. It, it, they they frustrate me. They're a very frustrating offense to watch. Honestly, they have absolutely. no balls. Yeah, absolutely. I I've been I've despised Atlanta for like the last two three years. You owned uh, who did you own? Was it Hayden Her- Hurst? Was it? Yeah. Well, Hurst. I thought Hurst was prime for a good year. Last they, they year, didn't even they're... use him. Yeah, it was horrible. Uh, they're they're frustrating, man. Um, yes, especially Calvin Ridley, a waste of a second round pick. And again, I probably would have if I was going wide receiver in round two, I would have probably went Ridley. I. He had all the signs to say that he was going to have a good year this year. Volume, opportunity, talent, youth, red zone target. Matt Ryan throws a lot of touchdowns, and then he's suffering with some mental issues he's got to deal with. Uh, you know, do your thing, but man, just sucks for fantasy owners. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jets at home, three and eight. Zach Wilson, I think he was banged oh, up. Oh, wait, did we did we say who we thought in that game? Uh, I think it was pretty obvious Tampa was going to win this game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think – Hey, tone, we, got, we got to put it out there. We got to say it. It's Tampa. I think the tone of the discussion would have, you know – yeah. Let's <laughs> I think so it. too, but we got to put it out there. It's Tampa. Well, I think, you know what, uh, Atlanta, again, if they show up, they could cover, but I, I'm just – I would probably just stay away from this game. I just – if I was going to go straight up, I'd go Tampa, but it doesn't pay much anyway, so. Right, yeah. Um, all right, Jets versus the Eagles here. Uh, Jets at home, uh, six and a half point underdog versus 45 and a half is the over under. Eagles, six and a half point favorite away, must win here for the Eagles. I mean, they're still in contention here as long as the Cowboys lose. Um, again, this game, I'm, I, I'm yeah. watching it because I'm, I'm invested in Jalen Hurts sports cards, but he didn't perform well last week. He, he sucked. It they happens killed to the best of them, unfortunately, man. It, you know. Uh, Devontae Smith, pretty good return on investment for fantasy owners, considering considering it was pretty much free. He's had some good games again last week, down game. Maybe this week it's a better game. Um, again, am I watching this game just for Hertz? I'll be tuning in a little bit, but not excited. Yeah, no, this will be one of those flashes on red score. Uh, red score. Red zone. <laughs> red red score. score. It is the red score. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, both teams are ass, but give me Philly. All right, next matchup here, Colts away. A tough loss last week. Uh, good team, man. They played Jonathan Taylor doing well. You know, Carson Wentz doing okay. Uh, good team against uh, Houston. Houston is just one of those teams that any given Sunday, they're an eight-and-a-half-point underdog here, but any given Sunday, they could just screw up a team trying to get in contention or, you know, it's a divisional game. So you got to imagine it's going to be played tough. Tyrod Taylor, I got to go Colts to win this one. I Cover the spread, possibly, but again, being a divisional game, you never know. Yeah, I mean, Indy should run away with this one, literally. Like, Taylor has, I believe Taylor has more touchdowns than the entire Texan team. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I probably did that in one game. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's just brutal, okay? Their, their top guy has more touchdowns than your entire team. Pretty embarrassing. Texans just got to get their shit together. Uh, next matchup here. This, I think, will be one of the games of the week, if not the game of the week, because Cincinnati, believe it or not, is a good team. Seven and four versus the Chargers, six and five. Herbert, Burrow, young quarterbacks. 
Mixon, Eckler, both really good fantasy relevant running backs. Did you just what? Yeah. What did you just yeah. say? Yeah, I said it. I said it. I, I, good. I'm, I'm so and Mixon. You gave Mixon props. I even. know. I these this is where I was wrong, man. Because again, if you look at Mixon's record, he was, you know, four years, years to wow me. I'm not wow. He finally wowed me year five. Yep. You know, anything can happen. So Mixon, and again, it's part of the offense has been good. Jamar Chase has been good. Uh, Chase was one of my sleepers in 16 rounds. Again, Mixon missed the boat. I'm okay with that, you know, because I dodged it four years in a row. He, he finally caught win this year. And then you got Eckler, who runs with a lot of heart and repre- appreciates the fantasy community. You got to give respect to the guy. He runs with a lot of heart. So 15 and a half is over under. Again, Cincinnati spanked the Steelers last, last week. So, they're pre- and they're at home. So this is going to be a good matchup. I like the points here with the Chargers, just on upside. And I'm going to go Chargers to win because I believe in Herbert more than I believe in Burrow. Me as well. I say it has to be the Chargers. I just think the Chargers are a much better overall team. So yes. Chargers. And they need, they need the win. And Bengals, you know, they're coming in with some steam off the Steelers. Divisional game spanked the Steelers last week. Maybe they can carry the momentum in, but I think the Chargers definitely need this win being 6-5. and five. Okay, this next one, I got to go on a rant. I'm going to yeah. swear here, boys and girls. So turn Go down the it. volume, kick the kids out of the room. Let's just kick this off. What the fuck, Jacksonville? Run the fucking ball! <laughs> God I know, damn it! It's like there's no respect for James Robinson whatsoever. They they draft Travis Etienne in the first round. They had a starter in James Robinson and just not utilizing him to where he needs to be. They're just throwing and missing. And Did you I, watch I was, the game last week? Um, no, I, I wouldn't focus on that game, but you know, same thing, red zones on and you don't see a lot of them. Um, I just, I, we got to talk about it, man. Like Robinson, his numbers are actually better. His yards per carry are better this year than what they were last year, but his attempts are way down. He did like, have it, it does not last take week. a genius to figure this out. 17 isn't bad last week. 17. I mean, we want, I want more. Okay. Yeah. What we do. And that's one week. I mean, they've got to give him the ball, man. He's, well, like yeah. I said, yards per carry are, are up, but his attempts are way down. Well, if you look at the week before, only 12 rushing attempts. That's exactly what you're talking about. Unacceptable. Yeah. Just That's keep true. feeding him. It only takes uh, – like this is true of any friggin' team that doesn't run the ball enough. Your running back, all he needs is one out of ten can be a glorious run, and it sets up everything. It helps set up the passing. It's like, Jesus Christ, I'm not a head coach. This is just common knowledge. And he's fully capable. Again, you're talking probably two, 17, uh, that can go up, especially for a guy like Robinson. The week before, 12, unacceptable. And again, I'd like to see more volume out of him as well. Give him the ball 20 times. You know, Lawrence, mix it up a little bit. Lawrence has nine touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Stay out of the friggin' air as much as you can <laughs> right now. Oh, They're my frustrated. God. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with them. I, I don't know. But either way, they got a tough matchup here. And I got, you know, I'm in fantasy football championships. And I've actually, we don't want him to run the ball. This is a weird one because I've actually got the Rams defense starting in a big league. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is a good game. 12 and a half point favorite are the Rams. I hope the Rams run, run away with this. And Odell finally got a big play, big touch. I don't think, I don't remember when the last time he had a touchdown was, but finally Odell doing something unbelievable. Yeah. To I me, this one should easily be the Rams and Jacksonville. You better wake the hell up. <laughs> so yeah, Rams are going to win this one. Hey, it could be the upset special of the week. Hopefully not this week because I need the Rams defense. I need Robinson to have two touchdowns, but I also need the Rams to have like 10 sacks and a couple <laughs> yeah. interceptions. So, so so you want them to get a couple of one-yard punch-ins. That's it. I hate the situation. Fantasy championships. I got Robinson starting, and I've got the Rams defense. What do you do? I mean, you kind of root for both, but it's a yeah. way. You win one way or the other. Hopefully, I win both ways. All right, so Rams are going to win that one. Um, 4 o'clock game, another 4 o'clock Eastern time game. We've got, you know, Raiders at home versus versus, uh, versus the football team coming off a short week. Um, you know, Taylor Heineke, five and six. Derek Carr, six and five. Three-point favorite are the Raiders. Raiders at home, got, they've got to win this game here against uh, Washington. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I have to say Vegas as well. I think Washington is a decent team and can hold their own, but Vegas needs to get back on track, and I think this game starts it. We're talking fantasy relevance. Antonio Gibson, big time bust, not performing where he should be this year. Josh Jacobs doing okay, but he, the only way he has a good game is if he gets a touchdown. It's like does nothing, touchdown, twelve points. Like that's Jacobs all season. It's it's very lackluster. 
Yeah, yeah. He's he's definitely not RB1 material. You know, I, I was a big fan of his, I think, before the season started. Unfortunately, he's a letdown to me. Um, still, putting up RB2 numbers, it's okay. All right, next matchup here. I'm going Raiders there. I'm sure you agree. Um, yeah. Ravens versus the at-home Steelers. Now, from what I'm hearing, I heard some rumors that Najee, big volume guy, might not get the volume as much, Dad, because, again, they might be out of playoff contention here. If you look at their division, Tim, the Ravens are 8-3, and three, and the Bengals, I think we just said, are 7-4. and four. And so for the Steelers to – I don't even know. Like, I haven't even looked at the playoff picture, but they're right now not in the playoff picture. So I'm looking at this and thinking, like, are they going to start resting players soon? I, I think this is a, this is an absolute must win for the Steelers. They're a three and a half point underdog. I don't know, man. I, the Steelers have to win this game if they have any chance at all. Yeah, Pittsburgh pisses me off to no end this year. Like Najee was hot, now he's not. Well, he started out not, then he started hot, then he started out not again. I, I just I'm oh Pittsburgh. I'm so done with you right now. I'm gonna say Baltimore just because I kind of have a hate on for Pittsburgh right now. Yeah, absolutely. I don't blame you. So do I. I mean, Deontay's getting it done. He's getting the volume, but Najee had a terrible week last week, not getting the volume that he needs. And again, he's been kind of touchdown dependent as well. And I don't think it's his problem. He runs hard. It's just that they're not moving the ball effectively to get in the red zone enough, not creating those opportunities. It's It's been tough, man. It's been and Ben Roethlisberger. I don't know, man. He threw a pick six last game. It was hard to watch. Yeah. Ben, once again, Ben's not the Ben of two, three years ago. He, he's he he's pretty to. much done. He just doesn't want to hang it up. He doesn't want to hang it up. Um, all right. At home, Seahawks, terrible team. Against San Fran, divisional game. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Russell Wilson. People picked him up. He's one of the most consistent quarterbacks in fantasy this year, coming off this injury, never really healed. Um, it's just like he's been playing like crap. Absolute garbage. Garbage, garbage, which hinders and hurts DK Metcalf and log I don't have any stock in those guys, but definitely saw some ceiling in Metcalf for the season. I don't know what happened to Russell Wilson, Tim. It just, I guess some people fall off sometimes, no matter who yeah. you are. Yeah, man. You just, every now and then you just have a bad year and he's, he's not looking himself. So it's just not getting done. The big thing here though, is the 49ers are banged up big time, man. Their receivers are all beat up. Debo's out, you know, Debo's a huge part of that. Huge, offense. huge. So you got to give me Seattle this time. Yeah, I'm going to go. I oh mean, Seattle at home, 12th man, desperate for a win. Season's pretty much done anyway. I'm going to go San Fran, but I, I don't know. This is a coin because they're at home and because it's a divisional game, because they're desperate, because they're angry, because they're due. Because they're gotta, beat up. Because you got, you got, I'm going to go Seahawks here as well. All right. So eight o'clock game. And it could be an entertaining one. It's a divisional game, which I like divisional games. I like the rivals. I like the battles. I like the fact that both these guys have similar records, six and five Broncos versus seven, four chiefs chiefs, nine and a half point favorite. I think the Broncos covered the spread here. Teddy Bridgewater just got to make sure he gets in the groove. Defense has got to step up, step up, neutralize um, Pat Mahomes here. But I think we have a good game on our hands and an entertaining one for Sunday night. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's it's going to be Kansas City. I think I would take the spread as well. Um, Denver's just got a, a decent balance. You know, the run pass, everything's just kind of nice and neutral, right where it should be to have a competitive team. They're not yeah. they're not amazing. They're just they're there. They can do it. But to beat the Chiefs would be a huge thing for them. So I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I like it. I'm going to go Chiefs to. Uh, yeah, this is top Broncos to cover Chiefs to win. Um, but the cool thing is we're going to go to the Monday night here. If you look at the Sunday night divisional game, entertaining, good records, and we got a really good Monday night as well at home, Buffalo, two and a half point favorite versus the, <laughs> Mac Jones, you know, young quarterback. Like what? I mean, this is, the, and then Belichick who, who had a lot of criticism saying that he kind of won these Super Bowls just because of Tom Brady, but Belichick proving that he doesn't need Brady to win, and he's groomed Mac Jones, and, and they're 8-4, and four, and they've been on a tear. Pretty remarkable, man, honestly. Doing fairly well. I mean, not, yeah. not blowing it out like New England used to, but still getting her done, looking decent. A lot of different offensive guys getting it done for them. Yeah, I, this is going to be a great game, man. Josh Allen against Mac. I'm, I'm happy to watch this game. Two young quarterbacks going at it, divisional game. Again, this is going to be entertaining, so – we got two divisional matches Sunday, Monday, good games, good records, playoff contention. It means something, you know, I hate, like I hate when you land on a Monday night game and it's like, 
Jacksonville versus Houston or something like that. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, like it's just a pointless, redundant game to watch. These games you can watch and say, hey, this means something, right? Yeah, this is going to be an exciting game. Give me the bills to take it, but it's still, it's going to be a great game. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are we missing? Who are you taking? Oh, who am I taking? Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. You don't get to scam out on that one. I'm going to go Buffalo to win, man. Okay, good. We're both on Buffalo. Buffalo to win. Uh, Tim, if you haven't shaved your balls yet, manscaped.com. If you guys haven't got it yet, get your trimmers, manscaped.com, promo code showerline. Tim, I want to. Do like a Christmas tree design. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to put that on the show. So we, we should have talked about that at the beginning of the show to make people laugh. Whoever's... Everybody send your emails to Joe with your pictures of your Christmas tree. Jeez, don't do that. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. We'll talk soon. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Tim, we'll talk soon. Glad you're back. Right on, brother. We'll talk to you later. Take care.